Coming up in South Africa, Bloemfontein City volunteers hold aid distributions for students in need. New staff members of the Taipei City Hospital got hands-on experience in conducting home visitations. Welcome to Da Headlines. I'm Mary Lee. Thank you for joining us. During the winter, Tsuji volunteers in Bluefontaine, South Africa, organized relief distributions for underprivileged students and impoverished residents. Worried that students might spend the holidays on empty stomachs, recently volunteers thoughtfully organized the distribution before school closed for the winter holidays. More than half of the students here at Maboloka Primary School are orphans. Today, not only has the sun come out to play, a group of blue and white clad volunteers are here to bring sunshine into the hearts of these children. We value so much, we are very grateful for what we have done today. It shows that children are at your heart. And because children are a gift from God, that is why you don't want to see anything happening to them, especially with their upbringing. Each winter, Bloemfontein City volunteers focus on helping impoverished students. With each bag of rice weighing 10 kilograms, however, how are the children supposed to carry it home? For that, volunteers came up with a way. The distribution took place just before the school closed for the semester, so children won't have to go on empty stomachs during their holidays. Even the principal of Sehunelo Secondary School rolled up his sleeves to assist with the heavy lifting. Recycled plastic. No one. Hey, and it's, I have one. It's enough. I'm telling you. Fabula, we look like a tool. It's very, very, very warm. It's not halal. No one. So, make the best use of it. Tsuji's aid came at a time when Bloemfontein was in the depth of winter. Volunteers and the principal quickly wrapped blankets around the children to keep them warm. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tsuji. Apart from conducting distributions in schools, volunteers also added a touch of warmth and love to 11 local communities this winter. We bring the sun, rice and the shoes for everyone. The one day, if you can help someone, even you go the 50 cent one run. Residents happily received two bags of rice, winter clothing and biscuits. What made them happier was the opportunity to give instead of just being on the receiving end. The rice and everything we have here, the rice is from, from Taiwan. They bring the rice from their heart with love. That's why we said everyone have to give another not only to receive from them. Dan, a local newspaper journalist, was also present at the distribution to witness this manifestation of love. I would like to say uh, thank you to the Bundis uh, people for everything they've done to our community and to uplift the poor uh, community. If, if all these ways, I'd like to say thank you to them. Over nine days, volunteers carried out six distributions in schools and local communities. Their kindness and compassion not only warmed bodies, but also the hearts of local residents. Moving to the Philippines, in the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan, the Tsuji Foundation is providing 3,000 prefabricated housings for those left homeless by the disaster. Recently, volunteers mobilized displaced residents in Ormoc City, Leyte Province, to make cement bricks for the planned construction. As part of the project, locally sourced bamboo was inserted into the cement bricks to serve as framework, a choice that is not only eco-friendly, but will also help with water drainage. In Ormak City, residents displaced by Typhoon Haiyan are investing their time in the construction of prefabs that will eventually become their homes. In the wake of Typhoon Haiyan, Tsuji Foundation decided to build 2,000 prefab housing units in Ormak City. 
However, a total of 520,000 interlocking bricks would have to be laid for the project. Unlike traditional cement bricks, in which iron wire or polypropylene fiber forms the backbone of support, with each cement brick made by Ciji, six bamboo pieces are used instead. The use of bamboo not only ensures the bricks are environmentally friendly, but helps with water absorption. We really want to help Ciji make these cement bricks, and we are not asking for anything in return. We just want to be able to offer help. Both young and old have joined in the effort. As even seniors are helping out, us younger people should help out as well. <laughs> While women help bring water, children help to tie up the bamboo pieces. All of us are happy to come and help with the making of the cement bricks. I'm very glad and also moved that everyone is so diligent in this effort. The director of the Ciji Philippines chapter brings cold drinks and bonds to share with local residents, further strengthening the bond between Ciji volunteers and residents here. In the United States, the city of Las Vegas in Nevada is known as the entertainment capital of the world, which means the large number of tourists also brings massive amounts of waste. Knowing the importance of protecting the planet, city volunteers of the local liaison office have decided to visit communities on a daily basis to collect recyclables. Although a game has ended at this football pitch in Las Vegas, the lights are still on because a group of volunteers are here to collect recyclables. For the past a year and a half, Tsuji volunteer Ling Xiaolan and her counterparts have been collecting recyclables at nearby football fields and parks. Normally, we will collect about two to three bags of recyclables a day. It is impossible for us to pick up all the recyclables in Las Vegas. Touched by the volunteer's dedication, the supervisor of the football field says he would donate all the collected recyclables to the Buddhist NGO. Yeah, we appreciate it. Come by, come by every, come by every weekend, Sunday, okay, eight thirty, okay. nine o'clock, and then uh, we uh -huh. we find it on the ground. We bring it to you too. Oh, is practicing recycling alongside Ling Xiaolan and Xu Shuxi, who would become a certified Ciji volunteer at the end of this year. Regardless of their late-night recycling efforts the day before, the next day the team travels to a local park to collect more recyclables. Grassroots Birdie. Master Zheng Yan says we need to use our clapping hands to do recycling work. Seeing all the senior volunteers dedicating their time to safeguarding the planet inspired me to join their ranks. As Las Vegas is known as a city that never sleeps, how many recyclables can the volunteers collect in a single night? By sorting recyclables, the volunteers have realized the burden placed upon the planet by human activities. When people go to party or see a ball game, they will consume a lot of bottled water. When we collect the bottles, we always have to drain out the water first. Some bottles will be touched. I hope we can inspire more people in Las Vegas to practice recycling and instill environmental awareness. Thanks to volunteers' dedication, recyclables around the city are brought to the local city liaison office, where there will become funds that will later help the less fortunate. Also about protecting the planet, in our next report, we meet dedicated recycling volunteer Huang Min Li from Jilong, Taiwan, who collects plastic bags from a traditional market for recycling each day. Her passion to preserve and protect our planet has in turn inspired the market spenders to follow in her footsteps. Early morning, Huang Min Li arrives at the traditional market not to shop or to buy groceries. Hello. 
collecting plastic bags for recycling is a commitment Huang has continued to uphold to this day. However, things were not so smooth sailing in the beginning. I once found leftover food and even beetle nut residue inside the plastic bags. I told the vendors that, although we can find the most amount of plastic bags in a market like this, we can only collect clean plastic bags for recycling. She even asked me to sort my recyclables. I don't have time to sort them into categories. It's so much trouble. I thought she was weird. Every day, Huang is seen at the market, passionately sharing environmental concepts with those willing to lend an ear. What was once construed as odd behavior by the vendors gradually inspired them to follow in her footsteps. Our actions will help save the earth and prevent our rivers and oceans from pollution. If we bury plastic items in landfills, they take hundreds of years to decompose. I collected recyclables at Da Wulun Industrial Park, Bai Xi Ding Road, Zhongshan District, and Tai Bai Borough. I collected whatever recyclables I see, wherever there are recyclables. Sometimes I even go to Wanli. Our manpower is really limited, so we hope everyone can come together to support our efforts. Although Huang may not be the most eloquent speaker or the quickest on her feet, what she does possess, however, is a passionate heart to preserve and protect the planet now and for future generations to come. In our continuing series to mark the 15th anniversary of the 91 earthquake in Taiwan, today we find out how the repair work of the Central Cross Island Highway is faring. The highway suffered extensive damage during the quake, and as the tremor weakened the geography in the area, it seems repair work has not been getting anywhere, even though more than 17 billion new Taiwanese dollars has been invested so far. Here's more on that story. This road is treacherous. Whenever it rains, debris will fall. You can see this slope is very steep, and rocks will come crashing down from 300 meters above. It has already been six years, and they still haven't finished. This is the Central Cross Island Temporary Passage that was just opened in May of 2012. However, debris continues to litter the 24 kilometers road. The 40-meter-long open tunnel we completed in early 2012 was not enough, as landslides expanded as our excavation continued. So next year, we plan to add a tunnel 50 meters long. Besides a new open tunnel, 1 billion NT will be invested in the next three years to add three more tunnels in areas prone to landslides. At the 15.6 km marker, the crew is working on a retaining wall. Anchors are being drilled into the slope to help stabilize the wall. We're at 15.6 kilometers marker of the new Central Cross Island Highway. Last year's Typhoon Suli caused a widespread collapse of the foundation. In fact, 50 meters of foundation were washed away in one area. So that's why they are putting up the wall. In consideration of those living in Lishan, the government authorized the construction of a temporary passage in 2008. Checkpoints were set up at Guguan and Deji to control traffic. This is really inconvenient. Like now, we have to get our ripe fruits and vegetables down the mountain. But the road is closed from 7 p.m. The situation is unacceptable to Lishan residents, 15 years after the 91 earthquake, and their way home is still not repaired. In 2013, the Directorate General of Highways carried out an aerial survey of the highway and discovered 28 washed-out foundations and 25 collapses. 
Though years have passed, the geography of the region is still very fragile and unstable. Experts recommend to let the land rest for at least 40 years. The whole mountain region has become a highly sensitive area. So if you continue to carry out repair work here, all your investment will simply go to waste. Conservative estimates place the repair bill of the highway at about 17 billion NT, yet nothing has been accomplished so far. Experts say it is time for Lishan residents to adopt a new way of life. The government should establish a forest restoration center here, so scholars can conduct research. This way, we can help Lisan residents make changes to their way of life. Whenever it rains, the temporary passage will collapse, and the brittle road cannot take the continuous pounding of grocery trucks driving over them either. Though 15 years have gone by, the situation here has not changed for the better. Perhaps it is time to think of an alternative. Instead of fulfilling the needs of these stone residents, we should look to the needs of the mountains themselves. The Taipei City Hospital in Taiwan recently organized a two-day camp for newly joined staff. During the camp, medical personnel were split into 30 teams to conduct home visitations with city volunteers. Over the course of the visits, the medical staff discovered the joys of selfless giving and the importance of treating patients with a compassionate heart. Walls covered with oil stain, this is where city care recipient Mr. Wu calls home. Thankfully, with the help of Taipei City Hospital medical staff, his home is clean and tidy once more. We only did a little today, but the recipient was extremely happy when we finished cleaning. With a wife that has been bedridden for more than eight years and a son who recently had a stroke, Mr. Wu is left without the strength and time to tidy up his home. Besides giving the senior some health tips, medical staff is so thoughtfully gifted the senior a first aid kit. At the hospital, we only have to look after patients until they have fully recovered. However, it is different for Mr. Wu because he has already looked after his sick wife for many years and will have to continue to do so in the years to come. I really sympathize with him. Meanwhile, in Shuling District, medical staff arrived at the home of Mr. Lai to better understand his situation. Besides giving Lai and his wife some anti-slip rugs, medical personnel also offer some good exercise for rehab. You don't use the muscles in your legs as much, so the blood circulation there isn't great. We don't have a lot of time to take care of the less fortunate, but I hope my work at the hospital can inspire me to have a compassionate heart. In Yonghe District, Taipei City Hospital Superintendent and Deputy Superintendent rolled up their sleeves to give a care recipient's home a thorough cleaning. The house was extremely cluttered and filled with spider webs and dust. This is a valuable experience and all of us are extremely happy to have the opportunity to help the less fortunate. They have to be very careful when moving patients so they don't injure themselves. After today's visit, I believe everyone will go home with a better understanding of how to look after their family members and themselves. By witnessing suffering firsthand, these medical personnel have discovered the importance of cherishing their blessings and promise to treat all future patients with a heart full of compassion. It's once again time for Northern District's Tima's Schedule Free Clinic in New Taipei City's Sanchi District to safeguard the health of solitary seniors living in remote areas. These bi-monthly visits are less about urgent medical needs but more about bringing some warmth to the seniors. Playing the saxophone on the street as a way to promote City's free clinic, Northern District team of members have once again arrived at Sanji District in New Taipei City. 
For those unable to leave their house, volunteers pay them a visit instead. Your heart is beating very loudly. It's not erratic, so it's fine. Your heart is very healthy. Treating the seniors like their family members, team of doctors bring laughter and joy to them. The biggest difference is here by humbling ourselves. We let go of our worries and the fast pace of the medical field and care for patients on a deeper, more personal level. Sharing smiles and laughter, team members routinely visit Sanju every two months to check on the health of the solitary seniors. The seniors regularly visit the hospital for checkups, but do they take their medications when they get home? That's why we are here. The doctors are here to check on minor illnesses, and the pharmacists are accompanying the visits to make sure they are taking the right dosage. These seniors can rest easy knowing they are in good hands with the loving care of Tsuji volunteers and the expertise of the team of members. Tsuji volunteers in Muar and Kulong in Malaysia both took part in events to celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival. Besides seizing the opportunity to promote conservation, volunteers also hope to inspire more people to walk the Bodhisattva path. To celebrate the Mid-Autumn Festival and Malaysia's Independence Day, Kluwan's De Jiao Hui Temple held a lantern festival for 26 days. Tsuji volunteers visited every day, not to take in the sites, but to recruit more like-minded people. Although many people just lived without taking action, I feel as long as I'm doing the right thing, if I keep at it, then I will definitely recruit people in time. The goal was set to recruit 200 people during the event, but 400 were recruited at the end. Many recruits brought along their children, while some young people are looking to contribute themselves. This event should be promoted to more young people. It's good to get into the habit of saving, which helps yourself and others. Within our own ability, we can donate to charity. Meanwhile, at the Mid-Autumn Festival celebration in Muar, Tsuji volunteers are promoting recycling. They even brought a special tool. This basket acts as a filter when we dump liquid or ice through it. The Tsuji booth also featured a vegetarian snack charity sale, Tsuji's products and handicrafts made from recyclables, as volunteers continue to promote the conservation of the body, mind and spirit. We're here to let people know that we need to clean our body and mind as well in order to help purify our environment. In celebrating an important Chinese holiday, Malaysia Tsuji volunteers do not forget to contribute their share to help Mother Earth. In Taiwan, the 2014 Taipei TV Festival kicked off on September 17th and will run until the 19th. In three days' time, close to 100 companies will participate in the event. Among the exhibitors is Dai TV, where this year they are promoting how easy it would be for viewers to watch the Dai channels via their smart devices or tablet computer. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching Dai Headlines. Goodbye.